the most key important thing is, does use reflect need? And how do the, those two relationship work? You know, we see use, we see evidence of variation in use. We know that there's different elements of need. How do the, those two fit up? Fit? And um, this is probably what we're really after. You know, probably in many countries, use probably doesn't reflect need. Uh, but it, but it's how much it defers we want to know. We're seeing this huge variation. And then this is a GP in New South Wales, Julian Hart, Tudor Hart, um, in the 1970s. And he wrote um, this, which is really quite neat. Um, in areas with the most sickness and death, general practitioners have more work, larger lists, less hospital support. They inherit more clinically ineffective traditions of consultations than the wealthiest areas. And hospital doctors shoulder heavier caseloads with less staff and equipment, more obsolete buildings, and suffer a um, recurrent crisis in the availability of beds and replacement of staff. These trends can be summed up as an inverse care law, he quoted in, and, and said. Um, and that the availability of good medical care tends to vary inversely with the need for population served. So, what he's saying here, and it's probably similar in your country, and even today, we can see that the burden, uh, the sick who need more care, should have more care, but actually have the least. And but, but, but the opposite is true. Uh, the wealthiest who need less care may have the best uh, access and um, use and also the best care for them. How widespread is this, I wonder? You know, let's consider a couple of things. Birth, at age, at birth, and elderly may have higher levels of need. And look at social economic status, because we know poor, poorer may have higher levels of need. So these things we know. And let's have a look at the data. So this is a health expenditure for women um, in, in Netherlands, in, uh, in Holland. And, and then they followed up on women um, throughout. And, and they, they look at this, and then you look at this, and you go, oh, it looks about right. Age zero, you need healthcare. Um, quite a little, because uh, we know at birth, you know, neonatal intensive care, etc. You need some the first year of life. You may have childhood infections, and you need care. And towards the latter, and you know, this this looks like it seems to reflect need. Then we have social economic status uh, from another study and the use of healthcare. Health visits to healthcare professional in the past two weeks by social status. So the top social class is one and two, and then all the way to the uh, most deprived, um, social class five, we see that actually the most deprived have a higher visit and a higher uh, visit to hospital and higher visit to health professionals. This also looks like um, it seems to, direction seems to reflect need. Porous, more hospitalization. This is GP referral rates. Uh, per 1,000 people of a population. And let's look at this. The least deprived have less referrals, and most deprived have most, more referrals. This also shows us that actually use looks like it is a, um, reflecting need. Poorer, most deprived, have more referrals. But you, we, we must also want to ask ourselves, is this gradient steep enough? We know it's going in the right direction. But should it be even steeper? Should it be much lower for the least deprived or much higher for the most deprived? We don't know. Is it, re is it reflecting need well? <coughs> to do that, we have to consider one more thing. The use-need ratio. It's necessary for us to consider uh, the use to need to access whether, to think about whether or not this um, higher utilization rates reflect a higher level sufficiently. Okay. So it's, it's difficult to under, know true need. We, we can use a surrogate and proxy measure of need. And then we want to compare that with different groups of using the same service. And then we also need to measure the demand side factors like morbidity and illness behavior. So this is use need ratio. Now this is interesting, understanding a proxy measure of need. Because we don't know the true need for uh, coronary vascularization uh, and the true need of coronary heart disease, 
we have, this is a study that's done of my school at LSHM some time ago. They looked at different districts of um, like the UK and referral for uh, coronary heart back then there's cabbage, so a coronary heart bypass, um, bypass surgery for people who have a cardiovascular disease. And we don't know necessarily the true the need um, of um, cardiovascular disease of all the districts of England, but they have used the proxy measure mean using the SMR, standardized mortality ratio. So on the bottom line, we've got a standardized mortality ratio. And you know, we know that if it's uh, above 100, uh, um, you know, the higher is worse, um, which suggests a higher level need from deaths. And um, we've got on the top here the rates of uh, cabbage. And we can see that actually uh, there is an inverse care law here that uh, in, in England, the districts with the lowest level of surgery um, have the highest SMR rates. Okay? So, there, so here, uh, use is not reflecting need, okay? and where need is uh, measured by proxy. And this is in England. Um, which is very, you know, it, might, it was surprising when this was find, found that this is a system based on process equity. Uh, like we can see the inverse care law working here. Those who um, have the lowest level of surgery have the highest level of need. This is also interesting. This is from PROMS data. So in England, um, they do patient reported outcomes for hip and knee. And um, they have found that those with them who are most deprived socioeconomically um, in the in the twenty percent uh, most deprived in the population have most severe more severe symptoms. The odds ratio, uh, sorry, not that's not odds. That's they have um, three point six points less on their score for severity. Um, so they're more severe, more severe um, than um, those who are more um, more uh, well uh, have higher social economic status. So they were in greater pain, had greater symptoms at the point when they had surgery. We don't know anything about those people who didn't access healthcare. This is just at the point when they had their hip, hip replacement. And also those people who are most and more deprived have 11% more likely to have a longer history of symptoms than those who are least, less deprived. And these are statistically significant. Okay. This is also uh, you know, another showing measure, measures of type 2 diabetes and different um, processes of process by deprivation. And we can see that actually um, the line, the trend is, is on the <clears throat> Okay, when we look at measuring demand side factors, this paper is very interesting as they've um, tried and attempted um, in, uh, Canadian, by Canadian researchers to look at um, not only um, morbidity but illness behavior and this was the first it's so hard to measure illness behavior so they took, took two areas of, in ontario which is one of the provinces in canada um, and they measured low use and high use areas they have uh, looked at objective data as well so they looked at their examined them x-rayed them um, and looked at you know the, the need in the population way as best as they could so they found that actually in the low use area, there was a population of um, 26,000 versus high use area. Then severity of arthritis does vary. So they did find that high use uh, of hip and knee replacement areas have more severe arthritis than low use. So that trend uh, um, works. But they also did the survey, which is the extra bit of trying to understand illness behavior, is asking them, do you want a hip and knee replacement surgery in their survey? And they also interesting we found that high use areas also want more surgery than low use areas. We thought we knew about uh, variation in need, variation in disease prevalence, but what we didn't might, didn't know before this study is you know measuring illness behavior is how the variation changes and how much people want surgery. And this is within one country, um, one province. Um, and actually, there's differences between how much people want surgery. Sometimes we might be crit criticizing for inequity. We're saying, oh, look, there's such a huge variation in use, such a huge variation. But actually, what we, didn't, what we don't know normally is how much there's a variation in illness behavior and demand for that. 
Sometimes there might be a good explanation for a difference. People just don't want surgery. You know, we are assuming that uh, these people are given good, uh, informed decisions and making the, 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 the right uh, informed decisions for their treatment choice. Um, there is differences. Okay. Well, I went through all that, but hopefully that was a, giving you an overview. Thank you very much.